Good evening and welcome to Pasadena Public Libraries 2021 One City, One Story program featuring Father Greg Boyle's book, Tattoos on the Heart. As I said, this is our 19th One City, One Story program. We've had lots of programs throughout the month. We have other programs. If you go to the Pasadena Public Library website, under news and notices, you can go down to the March off the shelf and see all of our programs that we have from children to seniors. So today, the program, Universal Pro Music Mentor Program, is the business and artistry of music. It's presented by Elisa Gomez Taylor Dash Irish. And we're very, very pleased that she has accepted our invitation to do this. I'm very honored that she's taking her time to do this for us. Part of One City, One Story 2021 is the availability of a free book. So you can go to our Pasadena Public Library branches and request it exactly how you would request a book on hold and pick up a book curbside. While the supplies last, and we ask that there's one book per family. So at this time, I want to tell you a little bit about um, Elisa. She is an American entertainer, singer, and songwriter of Latin soul music, and she performs globally in the US, Latin America, and Europe, accompanied by renowned artists. Her striking versatile style and lyrical command relish in luscious rhythmic grooves. She sings in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, and has two CDs available, original and self-penned. This spring, Elisa will release two more CDs as collaborations with other producers, artists. She's collaborating with R&B artist, producer, and songwriter, Anthony Honore to create old school and modern R&B originals as a gift to contributors to Music of the Night campaign for the Music Mentor Program for Youth. Her longtime passion cause continues to be education. She will be providing music business mentorships for youth, so look out for her music and videos on Spotif and on the YouTube channel. Tonight's program is being recorded for the Pasadena Public Library's YouTube channel, and we thank her very much for joining us today and allowing us to record it. So if you want to hear something again about this wonderful program, please um, go to Pasadena Public Library's YouTube. So at this time, I would like to welcome Elisa Gomez Taylor Irish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine, and also thank you, Pasadena Public Library, for having me and for this wonderful opportunity. I appreciate it. Um, welcome, everyone, and thank you for coming. My name is Elisa, and some of you may know me or seen my Music of the Night campaign for the Universal Pro Music Mentor Program on social media. This program was created last October because of the effects of COVID-19 keeping music students and artists inside. So the program is designed to inspire students to learn about the elements of business beyond just playing music, such as business structure, planning, and uh, building a financial, uh, financial stable career, financially stable career, and as well as studio and stage preparation. So spearheading with me on uh, the recording and technical side is Anthony Honore, and he is a top R&B artist and music producer as well. So we decided, as Christine had mentioned, to write and record a classic R&B um, CD uh, for easy listening as part of the project, and we're using our own finances. And this is to uplift listeners, especially those who are still locked in their homes because of COVID-19. So we recorded about three songs already, and we hope to we will be completing the project uh, by summer. So we're excited about that. So whether you are a producer, writer, or performer, learning to structure and maintain your business is equally as important as learning and mastering your craft. Okay. 
As Shakespeare stated, if music be the food of love, play on. And you know we love that. I say, plant your seeds one by one, stay focused, and let your music gifts rock the world. Since I've coached and trained youth and adults for over about 10 years on many subjects pertaining to career preparation, when I uh, served in nonprofit as a recruiter and, and, and a uh, community business developer, it seemed perfect to share a few of the same preparation concepts I taught with you, especially if you are just getting started or just need a refresher. Okay, so the first topic is going to be building business relationships and a good reputation, which is really important. So building relationships, how do we do that? It's important because uh, as we're building these solid relationships with people in the industry, they can go a long way. You can work with someone for a moment and don't see them for a few years and boom, you're back on another project. But they're going to remember things that you say, things that you do, how you worked on a project or even just a good meeting. So it's important to that when we are meeting uh, people for the first time that we put our best foot forward, okay? And some of these meetings are going to be positive, they're going to be insightful, they're going to be helpful, whether they're meetings or events where you meet people. Some of these meetings and events will be maybe non-productive and maybe a little cold, but it really depends on how you navigate through the event. You know, sometimes we have to be bold with grace and confidence being you know, prepared to step up and just say hello to someone and ask them, how are you? And ask them, you know, what brings you here? And what great project are you working on? And, um, and you may even wanna ask if it's something that really interests you, hey, you know, do you need some help? Can I volunteer on that project? I did that once and it led me to meet a whole bunch of people and work on some really great projects. And I'll get to that. You want to ask questions before you give the spill about yourself, okay? You want to engage in the conversation and get that person to engage as well. Um, you want to be kind and you want to listen. Um, after the conversation, if you feel good about it, ask to exchange numbers. Why not? You might be able to uh, collaborate on a project, which would be a lot of fun. So. I have, I have an example. So there's an organization that existed some years ago called LAMP, Los Angeles Music Network, which was uh, run by Tess Taylor. And uh, I called because I was inquiring about the organization and um, they had entertainment lawyers coming in to speak. So it was a lot of money. So I said, well, can I help out? You know, and they said, well, yes, you can. So I did. I helped out the door and I was able to come in and listen to the conversations, meet the people there. And that led to other events with um, LAM, the Los Angeles Music Network, where I was able to meet many more people at the LAM jams. They had a &R people come in, uh, radio hosts come in, uh, folks that put music on the air. So I was able to network and build some of those relationships as well. And I still have some of those relationships today, which I'm happy to say. <laughs> um, when you are attending these events, what do you bring? Well, you can still bring CDs. People do make CDs. Yes, they do and sell them. You can bring uh, USBs, those little flash drives, and you can get a flash drive with your name on it, or you can create a design on it. But they're really simple, and you can put your whole um, your whole EP, uh, EPK on there, the electronic press kit. You know, with your bio, with your music, you can put the videos on there. Um, absolutely, you can put that on there. So that's nice and handy when you're out and about and you're networking. And actually it doesn't have to be a networking event or a music event. It can be anything. You can be at the store and you strike up a conversation with someone. And then we ask you, hey, do you have a, a card? Do you have some music or something? And boom, you can hand it right to them, okay? So what you wanna do is show up ready with a good attitude and be prepared to mingle. <laughs> so, Again, after you meet folks, ask for their information if you want to stay in contact with them, okay? You can exchange through your phone. That's really easy. You want to listen 
because you can learn a few things too. Um, learn about that person, especially if you've been wanting to meet the person, you find them interested in, in the work that they do. You want to find out some things about them. You know, who's their favorite band or their favorite software, the favorite, say, favorite gear or something like that. But find out one or two things about them, okay, and remember it. Okay. Again, you're building relationships. People love it when you can remember something about them. Okay. And when you get done, you get home, research them. Okay. Find out a little bit more about them and who they're connected to. And um, you can also research organizations, different kind of music organizations. So I have a list of resources that I'll share a little bit later. If someone gives you a connection or a good hookup, to someone um, somebody that works in the industry that you're interested in, make sure you do listen and make sure you say thank you and you want to follow up with them. So if you get their card or get their number, make sure you send them a text message message and say, hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate you know you hooking me up. Okay. If for some reason you may have an uh, unpleasant experience or there's folks around you that might be disrespectful or not cool at all. Hey, keep your cool, just walk away, enjoy yourself, okay? Just move on. Uh, trust me, people are around watching to see who's, you know, being nice and who's not being so nice and who's being crazy. And they're making a determination of who they wanna work with and who they wanna uh, collaborate with, right? So second part is a good reputation. And that's something that we can create and something that we can build and sometimes even rebuild. Okay, so you want to be great at what you do or just do the best you can do. Okay, do your best and you want to get it done. So if you're working on something, try to get it done. Okay, people will recognize your efforts and your progress and they will let you know and they will compliment you seeing that you're doing some really cool things and you always want to say thank you. Thank you for noticing. Yes. So good reputation. What does that mean? Well, that's for me. It's someone who's informed, smart, organized. I think being organized is really important. And then creative. That's probably number one for me. Somebody that's creative. I love working with uh, creative people. Being focused, you know, is also part of um, uh, a reputation. Are you focused on your work or are you a scatterbrain? And we've worked with them all and it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to know what you're working with <laughs> as long as you can get it done. Um, someone that's pleasant to work with. Uh, there might be folks that are difficult to work with. Again, just keep your cool. You're there for a purpose, and uh, you want to keep your focus and um, and just be mindful. You know, if someone's going off somewhere, just you know, meditating out in the blue or getting angry or something, just sit still, be calm, and uh, just keep in mind what you're there for, and that's to get some work done. Okay, uh, be respectful. Why not? It's easy, <laughs> especially when folks are respectful to you. And do what you're going to do, what you say you're going to do. So if you're going to work on a project or a piece of a project, you know, make sure you follow up with that. And if you can't, let the other person know or let your team know, hey, I'm not able to do this. It's okay uh, in most instances, but you just have to let people know. So. So you want to be the person that people want to call and hire. So if you're building up a reputation, trying to keep a really good reputation, you want people to think of you uh, when they have a project coming along. Okay. And if you're having a bad day, um, sometimes we do, you know, stay focused on your goal. You want to show up. You want to be ready. You want to be ready to rehearse, be ready to play ready to work and you want to just try to be as professional and respectful as possible and if possible have some fun even if you're having a bad day try to have a little bit of fun <laughs> think in terms of when we talk about reputation you know would my fellow artists recommend me and, and what would they say so some of the things i had mentioned earlier you may want them to say organized, focused, pleasant to work with, respectful, 
creative. Those are all pretty good things. And I've been very fortunate to have worked with uh, quite a few artists and people in the industry um, that fit that that bill right there. Just been kind of lucky. But then again, it depends on you know who we choose to work with, right? And most often we do have a choice. So talking about a good reputation, again, being professional, being on time, ready to participate, good attitude, great attitude is even better, open to learn and open to adjust, you know, just the attitude of gratitude. So when we're working with other folks and collaborating, you know, um, we have our ideals, but what we want to do is we want to take turns sharing our ideals and then see how they mesh together. Or if one has a better idea and you're both in agreement or all in agreement with it, that's great. Okay. I always want to go with the best idea. Bad reputation. Um, you've probably seen a few of those folks in a bad mood all the time. They're coming in complaining, um, unprepared. Uh, feel entitled, I'm such and such, uh, and they can't remember their lines, <laughs> or they can't play for some reason, and they're wasting time. So uh, if you can't remember your lines, that happens to you, just, hey, regroup, you know, take a breath, take a moment, and, um, but don't make a spectacle of yourself. Try not to, and, you know, apologize to the team if, you know, if you're wasting time, at least apologize. Say, hey, I'm having a rough time. Hey, let's let's get back in there. I, I can do it, I can do it, okay? Just know that you can, okay? Get the job done. And then, of course, we have the uh, flake, the person that just doesn't show up. But you know what, sometimes, uh, You'll get a phone call. I, I can't make it. That's good. Let people know ahead of time that you're not able to make it. Um, I had an instance where I invited someone to uh, participate in something and they totally forgot they were in a different time zone and <laughs> and uh, they overslept and they were very honest. I appreciate the honesty. I really did. Plus, they did some special things for me uh, in marketing and I remember that. So, uh, of course, you got to be forgiving. It depends on you know who it is if there's somebody that you value what they can bring to the table and they're genuine about it you know you can forgive it but it's somebody that's just constantly being a flake all the time then you can just move on and find some folks that will you know step up to the plate nothing wrong with that okay all right i might be moving a little bit fast i hope that's okay <laughs> so um i want to move into agreements which is the other section. And I'm so sorry, I'm not even using my... Here we are. Why have an agreement? <laughs> okay. Agreements. Agreements are a big part of business admin tasks. And along with these agreements, you know, you have your EPK, electronic press kits, you have important creative work, lyric writings, poetry, compositions, meetings, interviews, designs, things that you create, and collaboration and ideas. And this is something that you want to put into your digital file. You want to keep track of everything that you do and things that you create. And you want to date them because you never know when you need to go back and use them again as a reference. And it's also, uh, this is information about you. It's all about you, and it's a live uh, document of your progress and your accomplishments. And no matter how small or huge, it's a step forward in the direction that you are you're trying to move towards, uh, and you can measure it as well. So when you're looking back and say, I did this X, Y, and Z that I planned on doing, and boom, a couple other things came up that uh, was put in front of you, uh, projects, and you completed them as well. You can measure that and see your progress, which is it's a beautiful thing. So um, you are responsible for keeping track of your world. <laughs> OK, so why have an agreement? Well, uh, to protect yourself. OK, you want to protect your assets your business, your livelihood. And, you know, one day you will be paid royalties on your work. 
and that you have created and produced. It's business. So you want to make sure that uh, you protect yourself with that. That's why. And when you are partnering on a project, you know, you want to have a clear direction. You know, what is your goal? Okay. Is it to create and sell your product? Most likely, yes. And some other things. Uh, and sell your products on as many platforms as possible and, and get known uh, on as many platforms as possible. Okay. So are you writing all the music or co-writing? Okay, if you are co-writing, then you must discuss splits. Okay, so I'm just being very general because um, in the program, you know, we dive deep into a, a lot of this, you know, what to do and how to do it, how to process it. Okay, so living documents means they're changeable. So you can write up an agreement with someone and maybe six months later, you can uh, make some changes to it to sit down with the person that you're doing this with, okay? And you'll come to an agreement again. It's, that's why it's a living document because it can change and both parties should be, should be able to agree on it. As an independent artist, uh, I write my own contracts and I share them with you know, partners that I work with and they may add something on there as well and then we just sign the agreement. And when I receive contracts, I read through them and uh, I may uh, insert some information, maybe, maybe not. And if I feel that I want to have a lawyer look at it, because I am not a lawyer, but I know how to read contracts and I know how to write some decent contracts. And I have copies of really good ones. And I just kind of just pull out what I need to make it really, really simple for um, the artists and, and uh, collaborators that I work with, right? Okay, so with that, there are a couple um, contracts that uh, I use, agreements that I use, studio agreement. Okay, so let me see if I can pull that up for you. And thank you for your patience. Hmm. Share. Ah, oh, here it is. Thank you. Okay, good. Hmm. I press share on there. Share. I don't I think. Hmm. You know what? It will be available for you. Um, so let me just tell you about it, okay? <laughs> Studio uh, work agreements. I'll have that available for you. So just give me your, your email address and I'll send that over to you. So in the midst of discussing uh, the idea of collaborating with other musicians, um, then you want to start talking about your, you start talking about your creative ideas, right? And next you want to ask, you know, hey, are you serious? You know, yes, I'm serious. I want to work with you. And uh, you want to explore, get to know the person, explore their habits, their working habits, you know, check out the references, people that they associate with, you know, who's who in the industry, which is a good thing. It's a positive thing. And then um, you want to find out what the project is for, unless you're creating something, a project together for something in particular, right? And then you want to talk about splitting, okay? So splitting can get kind of tech technical, but I just want to be very, very general about it. So if you're working with another artist, you can say, okay, I'm going to do the writing, the, the composition, I'm going to do the lyrics, and you can split 50-50, and you can write it in your your agreement 50 50 that's pretty easy right okay and um or if somebody is saying hey um i'm going to write all the music and i'm just going to pay you for it so you can just do an agreement hey i'm going to do x amount of songs and uh this is uh, what is your fee 
and this is when I'm going to start paying you, and this is when I'm going to complete the project and finish up the project. So that's another way you can do an agreement, okay? Uh, and then you do, you can go start off with a draft, and then you come up with a final agreement, and then you just go ahead and sign it. And if you want to, have a lawyer take a look at it. <laughs> okay. The next um, thing is, let me just share some checkpoints with you. Okay, checkpoints. Express clearly your goals and expectations uh, as a writer or producer when you're working so, with someone. And are you writing all the music, you want to ask, uh, or hiring for the services? You want to be very clear about that. And if so, if you're writing all the music, then you own it. Okay, and you have to register it, of course. ASAP. <laughs> if you're co-writing it, then you're going to be splitting. Okay, um, and there's much you can negotiate. Okay, how much time each person contributes to the project. So if one is spending 60% of the time, the other one 40, 80, 20, write it out. Just make sure you come to an agreement on it. Okay, and then you want to discuss it and then put it in writing. All right, and then we want to talk about, okay, how do you want to share it? Share the streaming rights, uh, share the publishing rights. These are other things you can talk about, okay? But you want to be flexible. Remember, you are building relationships. You're building a relationship with another person or with a team, okay? All right, so if something doesn't feel right, don't sign it. You know, if it doesn't feel right, don't go for it, and it's okay. I'll tell you a quick little story. I was sitting uh, in an agent's office when I moved to California a long time ago, and uh, he offered me a contract to go to the Middle East to work six days a week, three shows a day, at $100 a day. And I looked at it and I said, oh, <laughs> really? And I was kind of taken back because I had just moved here from Hawaii. And um, in Hawaii, I would sing for two hours and make more money and uh i had events that i would do off the island uh, nationally and internationally making over a thousand or ex much more and uh, being able to take my band and you know a different kind of experience but i just thought it was interesting so if you're in an agent's office and they're offering something to you that just doesn't seem right have a lawyer look at it okay and if it doesn't feel right to say hey don't feel like you have to sign anything immediately never ever do that you always want to take it home and read it always take it home and read it and have somebody else take a look at it as well and make sure you research the organization and the person that is offering you a contract okay performance agreements okay let me pull this up again All right, performance agreements. Give a contract to all musicians performing with uh, a letter of expectation. So this is what I do. Um, when I hire musicians, which I have done for almost over 20 years, <laughs> hire musicians, um, I put together an agreement and I have in there the name of the event, the address, set up time, Set list is uh, another attachment. Uh, information about overtime because sometimes that happens and it happens to me. Folks say, Oh, I know you haven't done a whole lot, but you know what? Can you stay another hour and just really jam out? So um, that has to be in there so that you get overtime. Okay. And you need to let the musicians know because sometimes we musicians have back to back. Uh, gigs and sometimes they're not next door, they might be across town. So um, it's important to let the musicians know um, this could possibly turn into overtime. Okay, uh, of course, attire, what's the theme, um, and conduct. You know, so there's nothing wrong with putting something in there about expecting uh, total respect and professionalism at all times. Break time, when is the break, how long is the break. And um, I tell you, sometimes I would have to look for musicians to come back up on the stage or and mark their place so that um, we can start performing again. So having that conversation during rehearsal is uh, it's a good thing. And just letting them know, this is when I start, this is when we start, this is when we break, this is when we have to come back. 
please, I don't want to have to go look for you so you can do a James Brown. I'm going to dock you a hundred bucks. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, so what I do is I hand this to the musicians. Um, I usually give it to them um, ahead of time, but sometimes I've done it after the gig and it doesn't matter. I've worked with some really great people, so um, I've never had a problem with that. Um, and then you want to also have on their uh, social security number for, you know, tax reasons. You want to make sure that, make sure that is covered, okay? Um, if I receive a check from the uh, employer, then I write checks out to my um, musicians. Uh, sometimes I would get cash. I would just give them cash, but I would ask my musicians to sign a note saying that they have received the cash. Okay. Um, great. Uh, my agreements that um, I'll share with you, I'll send to you if you would like, they're um, samples written by attorneys. Um, and so what I do is I just kind of make them really, really simple. Since uh, the musicians I'm working with, uh, most of them are not attorneys, but I do have friends that are musicians who are attorneys. So, but again, it's just to simplify it, make it easy and uh, something that we can track you know, for business, it's very important, okay? So again, you know, whether you're a producer, writer, or performer, uh, learning to structure and maintain your business is equally important as learning and mastering your craft. It's a really important thing that we talk about, uh, I talk about when it comes to the Universal Pro Music Mentor Program. Um, I wanna show you this. I have some resources I wanted to share right here and i'll be happy to make sure that you get a copy of this as well uh, music business association has great information in the music business info it's music business networking and they have a lot of business uh, um, technical information regarding music and so forth and then cd baby you're familiar with disc makers um, i have a good friend that works there who, answers a lot of my questions and take care of my CDs when, I, when I'm ready to make copies. The Grammy, you know, if you're writing music and uh, you're registering your music and you're putting it out there, you need to start applying for the Grammy. So find out that process and how you do that. Harmony Project, that's a music education for underserved youth. They've been around for a long time. They're doing fabulous music, teaching students classical music. And I had an opportunity to see them perform a few years back and they're just phenomenal. Um, the Black Latino, International Society of Black Latinos, uh, I'm a board member and uh, we give out student scholarships every other year and um, through the course of the year, uh, students that are working on uh, technology and in other fields and we try to support them as much as possible as well as other um, organizations we partner with a lot of organizations uh, working with youth and so you can find out more about the international society of black latinos um, at uh, blacklatinos.com about us and we've been around for about 10 years <laughs> doing great things in the community as everyone else is and there's another association national association Association of Black Female Executives in Music and Entertainment, and it's a, a great organization. And then finally, I have LawyersRock.com. So if you have questions, uh, give uh, look them up, Entertainment Lawyers, and uh, see if they can assist you. So I'll be, again, I'd be happy to give you copies of all of this, and just to show you here. So with the program, um, it is my vision to take small classes of uh, students and uh, bring in professionals from, you know, nationally, internationally that specialize in certain things to give a different perspective and not only to educate and have dialogue with the students so they, the students can ask questions and um, putting a blueprint together for them that they can change through the course of their lives with something that they can follow but also developing relationships um, with the people that are coming in to volunteer and help teach the program. 
and I'm very grateful for that. But that's so important and very valuable to have um, people that you can reach out to and let them know about your progress and, uh, and ask them, hey, you know, can you connect me here, connect me there? Because eventually these students will be doing the same thing. They're going to learn that process of how to connect and how important and valuable that is. And they're going to be doing it themselves. So here in this picture, mentoring. So we have Honor Ray, international R&B artist and my producer for the Music of the Night uh, CD that we're going to be completing by summer. And uh, he will be instructing on how to record and produce in the studio. And he works with a lot of youth already, which is fantastic. And um, he produced uh, a song for me, Sea of Love, which is on Spotify. So um, uh, he, we're working together on this project, which is very exciting. And uh, if you want to know more about um, the Music of the Night campaign or just look at some of the videos of the updates and so forth, you're welcome to do that and, and, and check it out. So if you want to find me, Elisa Gomez Taylor, you can find me on YouTube, Spotify, all the social medias. If you just put in my name, because nobody else wants my name. So you'll find information and look out for the Music of the Night old school R&B CD that's coming out this summer. And um, I just want to say thank you so much to Christine and Shauna. I appreciate you so much. And uh, please check out the robust monthly program off the shelf 2021 one city one story pasadena library and i want to say thank you so much and don't forget always wear a mask keep your distance stay safe thank you so much and if you have any questions i'm open Thank you so much, Lisa. It was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. You can Thank see you. that I put in the chat for everyone. You very graciously offered anyone to contact you to get um, a copy of all of the forms that you've given. Um, yes. Talked about lots of wonderful forms and lots of things for everyone to think about. So it's Elisa Gomez Taylor at gmail.com. So yes. um, lots and lots of information you gave us, lots to um, process and think about <laughs> the music business. You know, right, it's just the basics. And, and that's what we have to start is just understanding the basics. And when it comes to the agreements, like I said, hey, go talk to the lawyers that if it gets more complicated, if you're talking about a, a company that's handing you a 30 page contract, yeah, you wanna sit down with an attorney for that, for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Or you've just been overwhelmed by listening to all of this? Because you, you've really, you sing in uh, Spanish and Portuguese. I do. And I write music. I write a lot of music. Oh, and you write a lot of music too, to do that. So how long you've been, I think you said you've been in this business more than 20 or 30 years. Yeah, over, over 20 years. I started off as a teenager with my brother's band back in Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, uh -huh. Ohio and that's officially now the, the funk town. <laughs> a lot of funk players come out of, out of Dayton, Ohio. And I still have um, a, a friends, uh, fellow musicians that I uh, communicate with over there that are running the funk center, actually. And um, so I, I grew up with R&B music, listening to my dad's jazz music, my mother's Latin music. So I was hearing all of this as a young person and absorbing all of it. But I started out singing R&B and touring with my brothers as a teenager. And then I had moved to Hawaii and I started singing jazz and Latin jazz. I knew the music already because I was listening to it when I was a kid and I was a teenager. So it came to me fairly easily, but I had to practice. I had to really learn the music, you know, the lyrics, the melody and all of that, and then make it my own. And then branching out, I branched out into doing Brazilian music because uh, a wonderful um, pianist, Joe Goldfarb said, you know, you should start singing more Brazilian music. I said, like, okay. <laughs> You playing it? <laughs> and I did, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So what's so interesting is my my uh, CD Lava Man uh, was uh, produced, and my 
produced by a gentleman from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and uh, he also um, played guitar on there as well. So we uh, worked together on that CD. So it has more of a, a little Brazilian flair to it. And the Maui Dream CD, which I actually wrote all the songs when I was living in Hawaii, and then I released it here, is more of a Latin jazz, laid back, smooth jazz with a little bit of R&B, a little bit of Latin flavor in there as well. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations on all of that. Congratulations. Well, someone wants to know how students can apply for this mentor program. So we are just starting off and we're going to start off with cohorts. And what that means, um, just starting off with uh, maybe a small group of students because it's free for them. They don't have to pay for it. And so we're, I'm still um, co uh, confirming the, the teachers, what they're going to be teaching and so forth. So once we get more grounded with that, I'm going to have that information available. So whoever is interested, you know, uh, I'd like for them to email me. And so I can provide that information so that they can um, learn more of how they can participate. Absolutely. Oh, good. And so how many will be in these different programs? Is it like a small group of six or 12 or, or you're still putting that all together? Uh, I, the first group is going to be uh, probably maybe four to six. Uh -huh. Because the goal, my, my vision is, is to um, have it, it, to have it small enough so that the students can really interact with the people that they're talking to that they're, that are doing the teaching. And um, it's hard to do that when you have a bigger class. However, right. however, I will be going into schools eventually and bringing this, you know, parts of the program. But the actual initial program, um, I want the students to be able to have something really solid that they can carry with them for years on. And it's, again, it's a living document that they can change up. But at least it's a, a basic blueprint and the knowledge that they'll be getting from the experts that will be participating. You know, this is knowledge of what's going on now, what's going on with the future. I also want them to be able to have a relationship, a business relationship, mentoring relationship with the folks uh, that are teaching the program. So they can reach out and say, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, what do you think? And, and, and also they're learning how to um, connect, learning how to collaborate, perhaps, so that they grow up in their mindset, you know, this is what you need to do. You got to mentor people. So we want to teach them how to mentor as well. Given, so given so what, is the, what is the age group? What, what ages do you hope are going to be in your group? I think starting out, it's going to be 18 to 24 starting out mm -hmm. yes. okay all right and so you can have men and women it's just mm -hmm. anyone that's interested in participating do they fill out an application or do they just need to they need to contact you through your email that we've provided i think it's best they contact me. there will be there will be an application process and probably a, an essay about why they want to get into the program and you know what to expect to get out of it and um, contribute in it mentally, you know. Um, right. It's important that um, when somebody is in the program, that they stay in the program until it's completed, so they can. How, get how long is the program? How long do you anticipate the program to be? Well, I, I I'm thinking about six weeks, and I'm going to be flexible with that because if I when I start going into the schools, it may be a couple weeks, it may be four weeks or six weeks. So I'm going to be very flexible. I just want to make sure that I maintain the integrity of the program of what I'm trying to achieve and what I want the students to uh, absorb. I want them to be able to have something that they, that they really value and something they can really learn from. And um, Again, learning how to mentor. When they're being mentored, I want them to learn that process as well so they can start mentoring as well. 
Well, this is just a wonderful opportunity for everyone. You've, you've certainly given us a lots and lots of information to process. And um, as I said before, everybody has your email, Lisa Gomez, um, to contact um, Lisa Gomez Taylor at gmail.com. So um, somebody also wants to know, how about the schools you plan to bring these programs in? Are you doing high schools or colleges? Well, if you want 18 and up, so you're probably doing seniors in high school and maybe junior colleges? Probably high schools because uh, this is where um, students are really involved. Students are very involved with their music and they may not have the finances to study business, if you will, or take a business mm -hmm. program or special programs that are out there. So this is uh, for students that are serious about their career, but they also need to start flipping that switch of looking at the business side of the career, looking at you know the business admin, because they're responsible for keeping, collecting and keeping all the information that they create. You know, I guess when you become very, very successful, somebody else does that for you. But in the meantime, you have to do it. The student has to do it. The artist has to do that. So they have to, have to keep record of everything. So if they're making music, they have to register the music. Where are you putting it? You're putting it in your digital file, but what are you naming it? And, you, you know, you have to do those things. So, I, and I think um, uh, even adults that are in the music may not um, do all of those things, but they can learn. Right. So it, this could be a refresher, you know, if I'm out in public talking about this, that, you know, some adults will say, hey, I haven't thought about that. Or I, I need to get to that. <laughs> I need to start doing that again, you know. So um, but but those are very important things. The admin, the, you know, building it, building up your music career so it can be financially sustainable. And that happens when you understand the business part of it. Right. Everybody thanks you so much for a lot of very practical and important knowledge about all the things that artists might not think about um, or aware of protect themselves and their music. They're so busy just enjoying singing and inventing that they don't think of all of these other things that they need to do. So I want to thank you so much for all of your time and effort for the Pasadena Public Library participating in our um, career opportunities, the um, music industry for our One City, One Story 2021 program. So thank you so much, Elisa. And I hope everybody does contact Elisa Gomez Taylor to get more information. Okay, thank you all so, so much. Everybody's giving you a big round of applause. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate your saying yes to participate. Anytime. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.